This video will cover um, urban climates, which form part of the climatology section um, included in the geography syllabus. Uh, we'll start off by looking at some differences between urban and rural um, areas in terms of temperature, wind speed, humidity, clouds, fog and precipitation, sunshine and air pressure. Um, I would just like to give credit to um, the ACID study guide, um, which is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant book to use for the syllabus um, for providing us with this diagram. I'll just go through it. So the first thing that we'll look at is temperature. Cities are warmer than rural areas, um, especially at night. Explanations for this. Most surfaces in urban areas are artificial with few areas of vegetation and water. Concrete, tar, bricks and wood absorb heat very quickly during the day, while water, grass and trees in the rural areas absorb heat more slowly. At night, artificial surfaces lose their heat quickly, thus raising the temperature of the air in the city at night. Natural surfaces lose heat slowly, so country air or rural area air is cooler. Increased pollution levels in the cities lead to an increased absorption of radiation and thus higher temperatures. If we look at the differences in wind speed, generally um, lower wind speeds in urban areas but um, high in canyons along city streets. Um, what those canyons are is basically um, tall buildings um, lead the, uh, channel the wind down roads which form these wind canyons. Buildings increase friction and act as wind breaks, lowering wind speeds. However, tall buildings can channel airflow through the narrow city streets between them. This creates wind tunnels along which strong winds blow and, of, and um, often very gusty winds. Then if we look at differences in humidity, uh, humidity is lower in urban areas. Explanations for this. There are fewer plants in urban areas and so less water vapor is released by evapotranspiration from plants' leaves. Evapotranspiration is basically water leaving the plant um, through its leaves. There's less surface water in urban areas than rural areas as runoff flows into stormwater drains instead of sinking into the ground. There is thus less evaporation and less water vapor in the air, leading to a lower humidity. Higher temperatures lower the relative humidity. Warm air can hold more water vapor than cool air. Thus the air in the city can hold more moisture than cooler rural air. This reduces the relative humidity of air in the city. Then if we look at clouds, fog and precipitation, there's more cloud cover, fog, smog and precipitation in, in uh, urban areas. Reasons for this, cities produce more dust and other particles due to the amount of industry and construction work. Increased dust and other particles act as condensation nuclei, encouraging the formation of clouds and fog. The greater heat in the city encourages convection. Warm air therefore rises, cools and condenses, and as a result, clouds form and therefore rain. Then if we look at sunshine, cities receive less sunshine than rural areas. Cities have more cloud cover than rural areas. Clouds reflect and absorb incoming radiation, reducing the amount that reaches the surface. High-rise buildings block incoming radiation and cast shadows over Earth's surface in cities. The amount of sunshine received at the surface is thus reduced in cities. There is more dust to reflect and absorb sunlight, reducing the amount reaching the surface. If we look at air pressure, air pressure is lower in urban areas. The higher temperatures in urban areas lead to lower pressure in cities. Then we move on to a concept known as urban heat islands. We look at a day diagram. We can see this very mushroom type shape, which is the urban heat island. Um, and in winter, the Kalahari high pressure, which I mentioned, which I spoke about in the previous video, pushes down, preventing it from extending upwards. It also leads to the formation of that inversion layer, which I spoke about. Heating causes air to rise and expand. Um, the inversion layer sits at about 800 meters. So that means that the urban heat island extends to about 800 meters in the air. Then if we look at night, the picture changes a little bit, it becomes more of a concave, semicircle type shape. The air is cooler, so it sinks, pollutants are more concentrated, the inversion layer drops to about 400 meters. Uh, then if we just look at the different um, layers within um, the, the uh, an, uh, a typical urban settlement, we've got our urban boundary layer, um, 
we got our rural boundary layer, our urban canopy layer, um, and our rural boundary layer here on the outskirts. Um, then if we look at some of the causes of urban heat islands, uh, first things first is artificial surfaces such as concrete and roads, um, which are dark in color and do not reflect incoming radiation. Instead, they absorb it and thus warm it up. Um, tall buildings and roofs increase the area that absorbs radiation. Greater absorption by these surfaces means that there's more energy for re-radiation at night and thus cooling does not occur like in rural areas. If we look at anthropogenic heat, this is basically heat released by human activity, industry, transport, vehicle exhausts, air conditioning and metabolic heat contribute to heat in urban areas. If we look at pollution, high levels of pollution in urban areas result in increased CO2, ozone and greenhouse gases. Atmosphere, the atmosphere absorbs more terrestrial radiation and thus the temperature increases. If we look at the morphology of the city, tall buildings mean that heat is intercepted by many surfaces and no heat is lost to the atmosphere. Uh, lack of water in cities, evaporation absorbs heat energy in the form of latent heat, which I did speak about in um, the tropical cyclone video. Therefore, if there is less water, then less heat is absorbed and therefore cooling does not occur. Drains and sewers mean there is less surface water um, and therefore less evaporation, while the lack of vegetation results in low evapotranspiration. Uh, if we look at the effects in cities in terms of precipitation, urban areas have more cloud cover due to greater concentration of hygroscopic nuclei. Heating encourages the upliftment of air by convection, resulting in condensation. Enhanced convectional upliftment um, can lead to considerable instability and therefore um, thunderstorms. If we look at fog, wind speeds are slow, um, so fog is not dispersed. The presence of pollution provides hygroscopic nuclei for fog to form. Pollution prevents the sun from reaching the ground and warming it, and so fog is not dispersed. Fog normally um, occurs in suburbs as it, is, as it is cooler, and the dew point is thus reached. If we look at differences in winds, lower speeds um, in urban areas due to friction and the barrier of the buildings. The buildings cause turbulence and result in abrupt changes in wind direction and speed. They're speaking of, um, about the gusts that I mentioned earlier. Intense heating causes strong convectional processes which form low pressures over cities and draw in strong wind. Remember, due to that pressure gradient force existing between a high pressure and a low pressure. If we look at pollution domes, um, Warm air over the city forms a dome. The pollution becomes trapped in the dome, forming a pollution dome. Um, the pollutant zone allows shortwave radiation to enter. Remember, the radiation from the sun is shortwave radiation, um, but stops longwave radiation from leaving. That is obviously your terrestrial radiation trying to get back out of the atmosphere. It re-radiates re the heat back to the city, which just increases the temperatures further. Um, Prevailing winds can move pollution plume um, to the rural areas, which is another effect um, that can be experienced. Uh, temperature is highest in the city center. Um, convection soil develops over the city. Heat is in the middle. Heat that's in the middle rises and cools, forming um, condensation. Cool air from the rural areas moves in toward the low pressure over the rural over the urban areas. As the air rises, it cools and diverges towards the suburbs. Um, and if we look, pollution spreads through the dome. Pollution is most um, dense and close to the surface at night due to little upliftment. It spreads out during the day. The pollution dome can be influenced by subtropical high pressure cells. Um, the dome is strengthened in winter um, because of that dominant Kalahari high pressure cell which only allows it to um, rise to a certain altitude. Then, uh, following on on heat islands is solutions um, to try and combat heat islands and um, drastically decrease their um, severe effects. Change urban surfaces. What we mean by this is paint roofs white and use concrete instead of black tar. This will increase reflection and decrease absorption of heat. Create more permeable surfaces plant more grass such a, and pebbles. This will absorb more radiation. Maintain and develop wetlands to increase evaporation. 
greening the city, planting more trees to absorb carbon dioxide, which is obviously a greenhouse gas, um, and adds to evapotranspiration. Uh, plant grass on pavements and rooftop gardens, which will increase the evapotranspiration and thus lower CO2 levels in the city. Reduce pollution. Uh, one of these ways is to um, install or install some sort of a filter in factories um, where they release their um, smoke. Insulate buildings to lower the demand for heating and cooling during the different seasons. Increase the use of solar and clean energy to reduce the amount of fossil fuels burned. Um, then also promote public transport and bicycles um, to reduce the number of vehicles on the road and thereby decreasing um, vehicle emissions. That concludes the video on urban climates, forming part of the climatology section um, for geography. Thank you.